And what is up everyone, welcome back to the third part of my tutorial series on how to make a VR game for the Oculus Rift. In today's episode we will learn how to use what we have done in part 1 and 2 to grab a gun. We will also learn how to snap it right to the correct position in our end and use the Oculus input system to shoot a bullet. So without further ado, let's get started. Ok, so the first thing we will do is download a 3D model of a gun from the asset store and add the distance grabable to it. So I have found this awesome asset called Modern Guns and Gun, published by Knockabot, which is free and contains prefabs and shooting animation, so I'm just going to smash the download button and put that in my project. So I will go under the folder from this package and drag the gun prefab to my scene. We can already scale it down a little bit. And now we will do exactly the same as we have done for the little white cube, which is adding a rigid body, then the distance grabbable script, and next put it to the grabbable layer. Okay, so what we need now is a collider for our gun. So I will create an empty game object which I'll call collider and I'll create under it a cube which I will rescale to match the size of my gun. So I think this size should be correct. Now I will duplicate this cube and scale it on the Y axis. Now I can remove the mesh renderer to just have the collider remaining. And I can set as the grab point these two colliders that I've just created. So as we have done for the cube, we can also add a crosshair to the gun. So now I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Okay, so now this is where things get a little bit tricky because we are going to modify the distance grabbable script from the Oculus integration package. For that, we've had here double click on it. The reason is that initially the distance grabbable wants to change the color of the object that we have grabbed. So for that, it needs a mesh renderer attached to it, but it's not the case for our gun. To not throw an arrow, we will check every time the script is trying to do something with the mesh renderer if the mesh renderer is not null before end. So here I'm just adding this little sentence, if m underscore renderer, then I can proceed. Okay, so now that I Everything seems to uh, work, be fine. So I'm checking everywhere that we are calling mesh renderer if we have a mesh renderer. And now if I press play, we can see that it's not working still, but don't get demotivated because it's the last thing that we need to do. Remember in the last episode, we had to add a sphere collider with a grab manager script for, for setting the in-range variable to true. So let's open the grabbable manager to see what's went wrong. And this is where the problem was. The script is checking for distance grabbable behavior in the collider children and not in parent, which for me makes no sense because the distance grabbable must be on the same game object that the rigid body and therefore must be in the parent and not the children. And here we go, we are able now to grab the gun from a distance, what a wonderful achievement. However, there is still a little inconvenient thing here. When we grab the gun from a distance, it is snapping in my hand with a weird position and when I'm grabbing the object from close range, it is not snapping. So let's fix this now. Ok, so as you can see there is a parameter next to the distance grabbable called uh, snap position, snap orientation and snap offset. To, snap, to set the snapping of the gun, set the position and rotation to zero, then create an empty game object and place it where you want to grab the gun. Ok, so here I think this position will be fine. I can also add some rotation to my uh, empty game object, which will be the rotation of the gun in my hand. So let's create a prefab from this empty game object and I will set the snap offset uh, to this empty game object prefab that I've just created. 
Now I can replace my gun where it was. Okay, so now if I press play, you can see that I'm able to grab the uh, gun from the right end and it's snapping correctly, but on the left end it's getting a little weird. So let's fix that now. The main problem here with what Oculus has made is that we cannot modify the snapping during playtime to set it a bit more precisely. To fix that, double click, double click on the grabber script. The script works with two main methods. The first is grab begin, which is called when you start grabbing an object. This is where the snapping and the offset is calculated. Then when we move the end uh, of the player, the method move grabbable object is called. Therefore, if I copy the part from the setting of the offset from grab bugging to the method move grabbable object, we should achieve what we are aiming for. And in the meantime, we should fix fix the weird bug from the left end. For that, I will here uh, copy the line where we are checking on the left controller and do the same for the rotation. So instead of uh, inversing the position, here the snap offset.x, I will invert the rotation by calling quaternion.inverse. Okay, perfect. So. Uh, here we go, now we can press play. We can see that we can grab on the left end and on the right end and it's snapping on the correct rotation. But more than that, now if I check uh, my game window and if I go under the uh, empty game object offset, I can change its value and it's changing during or play application which is really really handy uh, for having a more precise offset so I think these settings are fine so I will just leave it as is and now everything is set for grabbing the object from a distance with a correct snap so now we will focus on shooting with uh, the oculus input. So for that create a little script that I will call shoot if grab. We need three variables. The first variables will be uh, pri private and will be the shooting animation from uh, the gun uh, that we've downloaded from the asset store which I'll call simple shoot. We also need the reference for the OVR grabbable which I will call OVR grabbable and finally we need the button that we will use for shooting a bullet, so which I'll name shooting button. So during the start of the game, we will access uh, the simple shoot uh, script with a get component uh, method, and the same will apply for the OVR grabbable uh, variable that I will access at the start of the game. Okay, so now each frame of our game we want to check if we have this object grabbed, so if the, the gun is grabbed, but also if we put, if we uh, press our button, so here I'm calling OVR input dot get down, if we uh, are uh, pressing this button on our correct ends, so on the end that is grabbing uh, the gun, then we can shoot uh, we can shoot with the gun. So here there is however a problem. Uh, you can see that uh, the grab by dot controller is underlined in red and this is because um, we can access the grab by which uh, give a reference to the OVR grabber so the grab so the grabber that is grabbing the the gun but we cannot know which OVR, uh, which controller is grabbing because the variable is set to protected. So to change that, I'm going to add a, a method which I'll call get controller, which will return the uh, controller that is grabbing the object. Okay, so here just return m underscore controller will be enough. And with this little modification, I can now 
check grabby.getController and this will give the reference to the controller that, that is grabbing the gun. So with the simple final things we need to do is create the shoot method because right now on the script that is provided with the gun from the asset store there is just uh, an update function that is trigger triggering the animation. So now I will create a method that will do exactly the same which I'll call trigger shoot and now inside here the if statement I can uh, I can ask to shoot the bullet. So simple shoot dot trigger shoot that we the method that we have just created. Okay, so now we just have to set the button. So here I'm just uh, setting the primary index trigger, and now you can see that if I'm mod modifying some uh, variable so to have a faster shooting, so the speed of the the animation, for example, and then I press play. I'm able to move my hand to grab correctly the gun, but to shoot also the cube. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video till the end. In part 4 of this tutorial series, we learn how to make user interface for virtual reality application. So make sure to subscribe to see the next video and see you around.